I like to knock one of these out every so often, you know, every, every few months, I'll usually call it state of the knockouts or something along those lines. And that's kind of uh, what I've got for you guys today. And I'm not saying anything probably that I haven't said over the last several months um, that I haven't said since January, really. And, uh, you know, for the sake of not repeating myself, I'm not going to go down the list of names, but um, if you, you think of last year's knockouts division and uh, some really big names that they had on TV, those names are all gone now. And we go into 2024 we get a couple new knockouts. We get Ash by Elegance, which thus far has been a bomb. It's not to say it's not, um, it can't be saved. We're going to see what happens on this upcoming episode with this match, match by Elegance. And then we got Zaya Brookside, who I think in her role has done uh, an exceptional job. Uh, she's queen of the rubber match. But I think when she comes out, she gets a reaction. Uh, she's small, but she can work a little. But at the end of the day, there, there's probably two. There, there's worse people you could have brought on. This wasn't a bad way to start the year off. But then, as we, as I said, we've dealt with departures, we've dealt with injuries, and look no further than Jordan Grace wrestling week to week. Now she's got a little storyline going, just wrestling people, open challenge, fighting champion. One of the most boring storylines in wrestling, in my opinion, and every single singles champion is doing it in TNA right now, so it's not anything that special. Um, she's the only one doing open challenges, but I mean, the whole fighting champion thing, that's what you do when you have nothing creatively. Um, does it, you know That might lead to something later. Maybe she's going to have an open challenge at Bound for Glory. I would love to see the return of uh, uh, Kylan King there to beat her. I don't know what her status is i have no idea whatsoever but that's kind of what i would like to see happen but you know gail kim got on a i believe it was a podcast probably like a month ago i think it was right prior to me going on my honeymoon or while i was on my honeymoon you know say hey we got knockouts coming and this is the second time this calendar year that she said that and there is no evidence of that happening that doesn't mean Bound for Glory doesn't roll around and we get the debut of someone. But we're we're like at a a point with this division right now where the I don't think the fans just want to see one person show up. I think there has to be a press release that comes out, say, hey, we have we have inked these three or four knockouts. And I'm gonna use a weird example here. This was about 2014, 2015. I think about 2015. The only time in my recollection, that TNA has ever announced a mass group of signings. And it, they weren't big. It was, you know, um, Pepper, Parks, Braxton, Sutter, Ali, uh, Marche Rocket, and then the two French dudes that, that were on NXT. But because you announced all five, it, it, it kind of allowed people to be excited about when they actually showed up. Had they done it one by one, whatever, I don't think it would have had the same impact, but... I really think that uh, the way that they can truly have an impact is something comes out and like we have we have inked these three or four girls. I don't think people want an angle. I don't think they want a sneak attack. I think they just want help. They want to see the division have some help. You look at the knockouts tag team champions, how many times they got beat Spitfire. Clearly, they're just going to wrestle until Spitfire wins. And no one wants to see that. That is boring. and. Um, I don't know. As I said, there's just no evidence that any help is on the way this calendar year. I don't believe there's anything this set of tapings. I think that already came out by those who read spoilers. So I think we've got two more tapings for the calendar year. It seems like they're going a little further into 2024 doing the uh, October tapings because I think last year they pretty much punched out after Bound for Glory. So it seems like they're going a month longer this time around, which is something fans want. So there is there is some opportunity for some people to come in. However, there's a lot of lame duck programming in TNA after Bound for Glory. And I don't know that there's going to be anything compelling when they eventually bring someone on. Now, right now, they're able to fill in the gaps a little bit because they've got chicks from NXT coming out, which has, in a sense, kind of saved the division. 
because if she was doing open challenges and it was just someone from the roster or it was just some local talent, you know, people would be falling asleep. Right now at Emergence, they kind of got a six knockouts tag going. I think that's something different, a little more fresh. It's not forcing Jordan Grace to have to defend the title. She hasn't defended the title the last couple episodes, which is good. So now they're stretching things out a little bit. The uh, militia haven't defended the titles the last several episodes. So they're, you know, basically since Slam Slammiversary, I don't know that either of them have. Well, Jordan did have the match with Rosemary. And we've got the match by Elegance coming up. That's going to be make it or break it for Ash by Elegance. Is she going to be Ash by Elegance or Ash by Awful Sauce? It's that's going to be it. Is it going to be a turn for her to where she is maybe a little more serious of a character, or is it going to be bad comedy? Like where where are we going with it? I reported to you guys um exclusively that RD Evans was the one in charge of Ash by Ash by Elegance. They felt that the personal concierge was the gimmick. That was something I said from the first time they appeared on TV. I said they gotta be careful that he's not the gimmick. I feel like they're letting her talk a little bit more the last couple episodes when she came and she attacked Jordan Grace and Rosemary. She was a little more serious, like more than we have seen in the past. Um, it doesn't mean you can't keep the gimmick up, but there's just the comedy is unnecessary. Uh, Jordan Grace is not a comedy character. You don't need to be involved in comedy when you're wrestling her. And I thought their match at Slammiversary, as much as I was ready to poo-poo on it, it was my favorite match on the show. I thought that that Ash really came out and did her thing. So um, this is going to be a really important match, this this coming episode about the direction of the division. But Lord, we need some fresh faces on the damn show. Again, the NXT stuff is saving us a little bit. But the fans would prefer some knockouts. And the crazy thing is, you, I would imagine, I don't know this for sure, I would imagine Jordan Grace is the only salaried knockout, the only salaried talent. I, I would argue maybe Rosemary because of her a tenure in the company. But I would imagine 90% of them are booked per appearance. So we just want fresh faces at this point. And I don't think it's that difficult to put the money aside and say, hey, we're going to pay your indie rate. Now, I'm not on the business side of things. I have no clue. I just know that, you know, I compare this to NWA a lot. They bring women in. They have a women's tag team division. They have enough women. If they need to bring someone new in, they do very easily. And we just kind of don't see that right now. So I, I'm not super optimistic that we're going to see a huge change this year, but I will say that this match by Elegance next week is is going to be huge. It's going to dictate the direction of the division. Are we still going Jordan just having wrestling matches for the rest of the year, or is Ash really going to come out on top, um, improve the gimmick, improve that she can be the face of the division? It's going to be interesting to see.